I cannot bring my old trauma into my new blessing because I will poison my new blessing. If I did not let go of my negativity from my past, I would not give myself an opportunity for a better future. Getting into another relationship, a healthy relationship is tough sometimes. Even when you think you found someone who is the light of your life, someone who can change your world forever. When you feel like God has truly blessed you with someone, that transition can be so tough. And I personally went through this myself. I used to find myself cycling in certain types of relationships with certain types of women, going back and forth with a woman because I did not face my hard truths. You have to face hard truths. You have to encounter hard truths head on. You have to learn from your hard truths in order to be ready for your blessing. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the same cycles back and forth, up and down. So y'all know I'm usually all about positivity and I love being about positivity, but sometimes this world can be the opposite of positive. Sometimes you have to hear the hard truths in order to become a better person. So today that's what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about specifically the hard truths that women should accept before getting into another relationship with a good man, a decent man, a man of integrity. All the things I'm gonna talk about in this video are things that I have been through, scars that I have endured. And thankfully, I'm able to talk about them now with the mindset of peace. And as you know, I talk about understanding the mindset of men and how men think. These are the things that I went through with the women in my past relationships. So I feel like this is uber important for y'all women to know. As some of these things were common, common themes when it came to the women I dealt with. I'm not here to criticize. I'm not here to throw judgment. As y'all know, I don't do none of those things. I am all about solution. Yes, you've endured something, but how can we move on? I wanna be of assistance to that effort, all right? The first hard truth that I feel like all women should accept before getting into another relationship with a decent man is that when you bring your old negativity into your new positivity, you are setting yourself up and your relationship for doom. So let me be totally transparent with y'all. The other week, I was going through one of my videos comments and I was talking about the characteristics of a decent man when he's interested in you, something like that. And as I was scrolling, I saw a comment that said, yeah, I had a dude and he did all these things and he still played me out or something like that. And it really got my spirit troubled a little bit. It really got me going because I can tell that this person did not fully heal from her drama, from her past experience with whoever this guy was. I could tell that she has not fully moved on and that she's still harboring on resentment, rejection maybe. But the reason why it bothered me a little bit is because I'm talking about something totally positive in this video. I'm talking about the characteristics of a decent man, a good man, and here this person is bringing up things that her undecent man or the dude that she had that wasn't good to her into this. And I'm thinking, these are two totally different types of men, two totally different types of worlds here. But because you didn't heal from your trauma, you brought that negativity that you went through into this positive world, into this positive space. You basically included every man into your assessment. And that's just not fair to be real with you. And this is why this is a hard truth. Because until you heal, until you make that effort to create some kind of progression in your healing, until you commit to yourself, that you will be better, that you will find better, that you did not deserve your trauma. Until you accept those things, you are setting yourself and your new relationship up for failure. Because let me tell you something, your new guy has nothing to do with your past. And I'm sorry that you went through those things. Let me tell you something about me. I've been cheated on. Everything seemed great until it didn't. And what hurt me the most about being cheated on was that it wasn't the fact or the act that she cheated on me because I know humans are imperfect. I know humans make mistakes. Some of the greatest people you know to this day, some of the, some of the people you look up to, your heroes, your role models have made mistakes and some of them huge mistakes, whether you know of them or not. Some of the most well-known people in the Bible were some of the biggest sinners. So for me, I can speak for me. I'm a forgiven person. I know people mess up. But what broke my heart was because I didn't feel worthy because she didn't come to me to tell me if there was a problem that led to her doing this thing. I'm all about communication. I'm all about trying to fix things. So the fact that she didn't come to me, I blame myself because I was saying like, hey, maybe I did something or maybe my personality wasn't welcoming enough or maybe I messed up, you know? 
and I was blaming myself and I was messed up for a, for a good amount of time. But just imagine if I didn't move on. Just imagine if I didn't make that commitment to move on and, and, and wanting to heal from this. Just imagine if to this day, I'm blaming every woman for the thing that she did. Just imagine how unfair that is. Just imagine if I go on YouTube and there's a woman talking about something positive about women and I'm in the comments saying, oh yeah, my ex did the same things, yet she still broke my heart. Just imagine, that is miserable, it's unfair. And it is a clear sign that I have not moved on. My hard truth was that I had to realize and accept all the years that we had in our relationship, all the things I'd done for her, all the happy memories we had together all the ways I built her and the way she built me, all the positive impacts that we had on each other. I had to let all of that go in order to move on to something better, in order to give myself a chance to have something better. That is the hard truth. I cannot bring my old trauma into my new blessing because I will poison my new blessing. If I did not let go of my negativity from my past, I would not give myself an opportunity for a better future. So that is a hard truth that y'all should know before getting into another relationship, especially with someone who is good for you. The next hard truth that I wanna bring up is almost handcuffed to this previous point, and that is learning how to forgive. Now, I'm not just talking about forgiving people for letting them do anything to you, letting things slide when people disrespect you. I'm not talking about that type of forgiveness. What I'm talking about is learning to forgive yourself because if you don't forgive yourself, how can you forgive someone else? One of the toughest lessons that I had to learn in this life of mine was learning how to forgive. Learning how to forgive people, learning how to forgive situations that don't go my way, learning how to forgive myself because honestly, I feel like my mess ups are the most impactful mess ups because I have to deal with these mess ups that I make directly. I can't share these mess ups that I make with anyone or anything else. I have to deal with these mess ups that I make when I'm alone in my room in the darkness, when I am by myself. No one can take this weight off of me when I mess up. So I had to learn on how to forgive and what that looked like. Another thing with me, you guys, Sills, is that I can be very stubborn at times. So forgiveness and stubbornness is like oil and water. So with that, I, I, I had to understand how to lessen my stubbornness in order to increase my forgiveness. Otherwise, I would be in the same cycles of frustration and anger and in the same types of toxic relationships and friendships. I had to learn to lessen myself in order to increase myself. And this ties in with the first point I made because if you don't know how to forgive, if you don't learn how to forgive, then you will always bring your past trauma and your past negativity into your present day, which affects your future. Your new man does not deserve that. Another hard truth that I feel like all women should know is that the more you gossip about your relationship, the less respect people will have for your relationship, and especially him. And this is why home is such a sacred place. What's at home, what's in home should stay in home. If your man is able to come to you to solve a, a issue that y'all having, and then vice versa, that is a beautiful thing because y'all are using each other as a team to get a desired outcome accomplished. You're not going outside of your home, getting advice from all types of spirits and people with different objectives and intention and then bringing it back into your house. That could be a serious problem if it's not coming from the right person or the right guidance. When you gossip about your relationship to the wrong people, to the wrong spirits. You are feeding their intentions for you. And that could be dangerous. You never know who wants your man. And that includes your friends. That includes your family. You never know who hates your man. That includes your friends. That includes your family. You never know someone's intentions on y'all. So the more information that you feed people, the less respect that they will have in the strength of your bond with your man. As one of my favorite sayings go, be careful who you vent to. There's a Judas in every crew. Another hard truth that I want all women to know before getting into a relationship and accept this is that being accountable is a game changer, a life pivot, a relationship booster. Ladies, when you are accountable, when you are willing to apologize, when you are open to saying that you're sorry, you will enrich your relationship with your man tremendously. 
Let me tell you something about men, specifically when it comes to our friendships, right? So between brother and brothers, you will hardly ever find a beef or pettiness when it comes to us because a lot of men are all about accountability. For example, in sports, there's a common phrase amongst us men. When we mess up in the game, this is what we say. Yo, my bad. Yo, that's my, that's my fault. Yo, yo, that's me. That's me. That's me. I messed up. We are big on accountability, but I feel like that is one of the main aspects and why the friendship when it comes to men and brothers are, are, are so strong. And that is because a lot of men accept that they're going to mess up and pretty much know they're going to mess up, but they are accountable for those mess ups. That's why it's very rare to find pettiness and that type of negativity in friendships of men and brothers, because we are totally open to saying sorry. What I found in the majority of my few relationships that I ever had with women was that they were not accountable. They did not like apologizing. They would go around the bush. They would do everything but say that they were sorry. And that burned me so much. It like made me cringe and just frustrated because I know I am totally open to say I'm po I apologize and that I'm sorry. So you have to be too. If you have a decent man in this new relationship, a good man who is willing to be accountable, you must be accountable too. You must learn how to be accountable. You must learn how to drop that ego and admit your wrongs to your guy. You're not admitting your wrongs to the world. It's just you and him. It is not that hard. And it is the right thing to do. Because brothers and men and friendships believe so much in accountability, that's the reason why their friendship is being so strong. If you do the same with y'all relationship, it will have the same effect. Now he's gonna be willing to come to you to talk about anything. Now he wants to do things with you because he truly sees you as his best friend too because you are accountable. One of the things I ask women when they say, oh, my man's not communicative. He struggles with communication. He never wants to tell me things. I ask her, are you accountable? Of course, I get different reactions, mixed reactions, but that is one of the main reasons why your man will not wanna to talk to you because you are not accountable. All right, so that is a hard truth. Hopefully you watch this whole video and if this hard truth is in your neighborhood, you know it's you to be aware of and what you need to work on. I'm here to help y'all, so sometimes I gotta send it to y'all raw. All right, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next video. Peace and blessings, goodbye.